This is Outside the Cage with your host, Ike Feldman, Pete Hoffman. And Saturday, May 4th, Fight Night 151 in Ottawa. Huge fight that we're looking forward to. Shane Burgos is up against Cub Swanson in the featherweight division. L- looking forward to this this war. And we have Shane joining us right now. Shane, dude, how you doing, man? How, how's everything holding up? How's, how's the training going? Basically all done. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to fight already, honestly. All the training, all the hard, hard stuff is really done. Uh, now it's just tapering down, focusing on the weight cut, and then uh, going in there and doing the damn thing Saturday, May 4th. Awesome, man. You, you sound like you got the excitement in your voice. I mean, it's been a minute since you've uh, uh, fought. I mean, dude, in, in our backyard, in your backyard, uh, Madison Square Garden, uh, you pulled off. Uh, and uh, you got. I think you got tagged a little first. But you pulled off an amazing armbar victory. You had Joe Rogan jumping off his seat. I think he grew some hair when he, you pulled that off. Uh, dude, take us through that experience, man. Fighting in the garden. Yeah, it was cool. It was it was awesome, honestly. I loved it. It was only an hour away from my house. It was actually on a – it was fight week on, and Halloween was landed right on Wednesday. So I was able to go home, treat, treat my daughter, and then go, go right back to the hotel and uh, get ready for the weight cut. So it was cool being that close to home. Yeah, you know, my first fight actually uh, flying, so that would be interesting. But, uh, yeah, every fighter, every New York fighter especially wants to fight in, in the garden. And, uh, fighting there and getting a win there in two minutes, it was great. Uh, like you said, though, like, I got tagged, but that still pissed me off, obviously. But uh, hindsight's 20 I took no damage. I was healthy. Uh, I was ready to go right after. And, yeah, it's good. Well, I mean, dude, you keep wagging that tongue out there. It's like a different persona. Uh, Shane Bang or Shane Hurricane Burgos comes out when you're in the cage, man. That persona hangs out. Is it just like all the training's done, all the sweat, blood? You don't cry. You're from Jersey uh, or New York. <laughs> that is all done, put behind you. But when you're in there, it's like time to have some fun. I'm sure Mr. Tiger Showman and Jimmy Rivera screaming at you, dude, keep your left up. Uh, ha- have you? Have they been like on top of you about maybe keeping your defense up, or is that just how we're going to have to get used to it? It's, it's going to be a slugfest every time Mr. Burgos fights. Uh, it's definitely always going to be a, a banger when I'm fighting. But, um, yeah, I definitely work. I, I'm always working on my defense, always working on my, uh, everything. So um, I think you're gonna, you guys are going to be uh, in for a treat. It's going to be a little bit of uh, a good banger, but it's going to be a little bit different. Well, not for nothing, like, but we, we've seen Cub Swanson style. We know him. I mean, this is a huge fight for you. This is a huge fight for the fans. When Cub Swanson goes into, uh, into the cage, we know what we expect. You know, he's had 35 fights in the cage already. You know, this is going to be your 13th fight. Um, so we could we can already see how this is going to go. Uh, it's going to be a slugfest. But we've seen a guy like Justin Gaethje, for example. He likes to bang, but it's also uh, there's also strategy behind it too. It's not just uh, let me just go try it if I can see if I can knock his head off. Are you? Do you? What is your approach to Cub? Do you? Does he have a flaw in his system? Do you know? Or are you just gonna throw out all the papers, get rid of everything? <laughs> I'm just gonna go and fuck everybody. I'm just gonna throw down. Hey, everybody got has a game plan for you punch in the face, right? Everybody says that. Um, yeah, I definitely have a game plan, but I'm not, I'm not a, a, a strict game plan kind of guy. Like I don't, you get those guys that are like, I got to throw this, I got to throw that, and if that doesn't work, you got to have plan B, plan C. Like I'm not that kind of fighter. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna fight. There's definitely some strikes and some things that I want, I want to focus on, but I'm not focused on a specific game plan per se. But I know some things are gonna work specifically against them. Those are things I'm looking to exploit. Do you? See, going out to Ottawa, I mean, uh, it's a bit more of a travel. We talked about the MSG, you know, what was an hour away from you. It was freaking awesome. You know, yeah. it's a little bit more of a travel. Does that does that take into, you know, how, you going into your mind frame, heading into this fight, that it's a little bit further away from home, a little bit more travel? Is, is your family coming with you at all? Is, is, is that going to change I, any of your mindset? I fought in Buffalo, and Buffalo was about six, six hours around the same time, and uh, Ottawa was only about six and a half hours, drive, so I was family coming out, a bunch of supporters coming already, so I don't think it'll be too bad. I think it'll feel really, really comfortable. It's only an hour and a half flight too, so I'm not really stressing about it. Can't really, I can't really complain, man. I've been, I've been spoiled when it comes to location. I've drove to every single one of my fights. This is the first time I'm actually taking a, taking a plane. But yeah, like I said, all my friends, all my family. Look at you, too. Burgos, getting bougie, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting a shoot. And like you're on your way to get a shoot, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm all way to get uh, fit for a shoot, yeah. <laughs> Don't get August McGregor. Don't give that guy any more freaking money of yours, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, but Shane, honestly, can't wait for this fight on uh, May 4th. Uh, a Strong Island native ally, Kintas fighting the legend and cowboy. Can't wait for that yeah. as well. But, dude, Cub freaking Swanson, he was in the show Kingdom. He's fought uh, Brian Ortega, Max Holloway, 
Frankie Edgar Everybody, twice. Yeah. Dude, this is a huge name for you to jump off of, possibly. Uh, yep. If you get the win by decision, that's amazing. If you get the win by finish, dude, they're going to prop you up in that 145 division. It's a little in flux at the top, especially Max jumping around and Jose Aldo, who wants to see that rematch, or take on the show. This is a huge opportunity for you, man. Are you putting any extra pressure on yourself? Or you just Is there a certain aura or mental feel that the, the camp feels different and you know you're going to win? I uh, I have that 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 feeling like uh when I had my UFC debut it was only on a week and a half week notice and I, I no nerves at all I just was super confident I know that everything happens for a reason and I was given that opportunity for a reason and this feels the exact same way it really does I feel like uh, the stars are aligning and I'm I have no doubt that I'm gonna win this fight but uh I'll I'll take all the pressure in the world man I got I got a family to provide for and um give me that pressure because. I thrive under those lights and under, under those circumstances. So I'll take all the pressure in the world. I'm not just fighting for me. I'm fighting for my daughter and my wife and uh, financial stability and to give them the life that they deserve and they need and they, and I want them to have. So I'm no nerves, man. I know I'm going to get this job, the job done on May 4th. I mean, we love it, man. At Hurricane Shane B on Twitter. Awesome. Uh, Shane Burgos is joining us right now. Featherweight fight with Cub Swanson coming up on May 4th. Again, we're talking about how how huge of an opportunity it is for you. But we've again we we talked about the influx of you know the chaos for this division. We saw Max Holloway up on the in the the lightweight division. Do you ever see yourself? I mean, you're a big guy too. You're 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 five eleven. Do you see yourself though? Do you can you ever build up to a, a lightweight stature and, and go uh, into that that division as well? Or do you really like this featherweight division for you? Is this your home? Oh, featherweight is definitely my home, but I definitely, I mean, as I get older, the weight cuts are getting harder. Um, I definitely think I could build up to it. Do I want to? Not necessarily. Um, if We'll see how it goes in a couple of years once I hit my 30s, but uh, right now, I, I got the weight cut down to a science. It's, uh, it's, it's not easy. It's never easy, but I've never, I've never missed it before, and I've never had a problem making it before, so I'm going to stay my ass right at 45. I love it, dude. I love it. But you know what? You say you have it to a science. And I'm not I'm not accusing anything of it at all, but you saw TJ Dillashaw. We watched TJ Dillashaw talk about he had that science down. Unfortunately for him, he had PEDs as well. But like, what type of regimen do you have? Are you at at that level with the supplements as as far? Because I mean, he talked about uh, Calvita uh, about how they had the supplements and all this other stuff for the weight cut. Do you are you be down careful to like what showman's putting in your drink, man? <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of it. I handle all that stuff. Um, my nutritionist is me and my, my strength and conditioning coach. My uh, Tiger doesn't really handle any of that because he knows that I got that under control. But uh, it's not so much the supplements. I don't really use a crazy amount of supplements. It's uh, more what I'm eating when I'm eating it. You know what I mean? You got to be smart when you're eating the carbs and when you're eating the fats and you're eating the proteins. Don't just, you can't just eat just to eat. And you can't just because it's healthy doesn't mean it's the right time to eat it. You know what I mean? Like if you're eating brown rice at night, it just doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? So I, I, that, that's the science I mean. Like, Carb cycling a little bit, doing a little keto here and there. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the science I mean. Awesome, dude. I mean, you look shredded. Like, seriously, we're not joking, man. You, you have that frame. Like, you got those lat muscles that are like, feed me. Give me some money. <laughs> money. Give me some food. That's my coach. Yeah, I, got, I gained a lot of – I had a lot of gains since uh, getting with my transmission coach at uh, Lead to Lead. Uh, John Hahn, dude's a mad sign. He's been working me like crazy for this fight. It's probably the, the best shape I, I feel like I've ever been in. Um, dude, I'm co- that's awesome, man, because everybody sees the freaking potential. It's like, that's why everybody gets scared. They're like, keep your left up, keep your tongue in, but yeah. it's your style, man. Uh, I feel like now you're like a more, um, uh, uh, not controlled chaos, but you're more of like a a, a, a warrior that it knows what he's doing. He's like, I'm going to get stabbed, but I'm going to cut your head off while I'm doing it, man. I, I love the style. I'm sure the UFC's patted you on the back. Mick Maynard, Sean Shelby, uh, they're giving you fights, man. They're feeding you when you want them. They're putting you in the garden, putting you on UFC pay-per-view events. You're their guy. Have you felt the support from the company? Yeah, I definitely have. Uh, they've been treating me good. They've been giving me some good matchups, giving me a lot of matchups that are in close, close to home so I can pack the place out, too. And, uh, like I said, the matchups have been awesome matchups, fun matchups, and I, I want to keep getting these matchups that are going to get me paid, man. I'm trying to get a bonus every single time I play. <laughs> Let's go. 50 Let's go. G's, baby. That was fantastic. Yeah. This, you know, you know, we when you fought Long Island, that was fantastic. You know, we saw that, and the crowd was so so behind you. You know, and, and it really, you you really are just building as a as a fighter uh, for fans of sports. We love to see this and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, you could control chaos, the warrior aspect that we've been talking about. Um, do you, though, sit, sit there and say, I don't know if I really want to go into a war every time. Is there a time where you want to sit back and be like, we talked to Roy McDonald the other day, and he said, I loved it for a long time, but now I feel like I need to, I, I just want to win, and I will go, I will change my, I'm changing my mindset. I don't want that, that, that I'm battle-tested already. I know I can do it. I want to go a different round. Is there, does, does Shane Burgos ever, is there ever going to be a point in time where you say, you know what, I'm just going to do what it takes to win, and I don't need to go out there for a war every time? 100 percent that's always my mentality honestly but i know like as soon as i get in there kind of like gloves are off I'm just like, Fuck <laughs> it. it's gonna get me paid it's gonna get me uh, it's gonna be the win it works um but yeah I, I i take my my health super serious especially since i'm a father now um i want to be around for my kids forever i want to see her grow up and have kids of her own so i take my health super serious so like that's why i'm not too upset about the, the two-minute fight last time like it was I had a 10-month layoff then i had a two-minute fight i was after i was like shit man i wish i got my feet a little more weapon like you know what all right. Yeah, you know, because, again, you're going to – listen, we expect you and Cub to go at it, and but the experience of those type of fights definitely build to the next one. So if, to only have two minutes, did you feel like a little almost like cage rust? Not at all. Not at all. I don't believe in that. Uh, like, I'm a big advocate against it. Uh, I don't believe in that at all. I, I, I spar so hard and we train so hard. Not, not hard to the point where it's stupid and we're getting hurt, but I don't let myself – get out of shape and uh and get lazy and, and and all that stuff like if these guys are, i mean if you're out for an injury and you can't spar yet there's definitely gonna be some ring rush but you gotta train accordingly you know what i mean if you're gonna be out for a while you gotta start get your, get your hard sparring sessions and not not in training camp you gotta do that before training camp and i've been doing that for a while now so and shane can oh, you do okay. me a favor is the hair long for this camp no nah, man not yet not yet not good yet. good dude back. keep it short i swear the judges if they see somebody's bangs or hair gets like punched back like they score it differently man i'll that's, tell that's you like favorite, be careful with that uh yeah. shane hurricane burgos thank you for the time again my last thing man you're going to be up there the main event is ally kinta a new york native uh is there any sh- chance that uh you in the longo camp do you guys bullshit during the have you guys have you s- reached out to them and uh if you have uh, would you uh, meet up with them during fight week uh, I'll probably see them during fight week. They're, we're all cordial and really cool. Um, I know we, uh, the only thing is they have like Jim, uh, Aljamain and Jimmy Ford, and they might fight again because they're both ranked. Oh, so right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. So, but well, they, no, nothing, no, no animosity. I always say what's up to the guys, and they always say what's up to me. Everyone's cool. Everyone's cordial. I mean, that, that my final question too is, is to follow, pick it back off of that. I mean, you guys are not that far away from each other, but the camps. You know the good vibes, good. But when you're fighting each other, like you do have to have that mentality of I have to, I'm gonna fuck you up right now. So I mean, can you take yourself out of that, even though your boys fighting their boy type of thing? I don't know. I've never been in that situation. Don't uh, be throwing dollies in the Ottawa parking lot. Oh, no, 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 never that. I always keep it respectful. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's hard to. I've never been in that situation, so I don't know. <laughs> well, listen, Shane, we'll let you go get your, your go suit. Go get your little suit, man. Are we going to be seeing it fight week? Are we going to be seeing the suit on fight week? Uh, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe. This is not specifically for that, but we'll see. Maybe. I may go ring it. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, listen, Shane Burgos, thanks for the time. Looking forward to your fight. Cubs Swanson, Saturday, May 4th. Looking forward to it, my man. Thank you, guys, for having me. Have a good one, all right? Enjoy the show. Thank you.